Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 8th round of the 1970 season, the German Grand Prix. It was held on the 2nd of August, it had 25 entries, 21 of them took part in the race with 12 of them ending up retiring. The race was held over 50 laps and was completed in 1 hour and 42 minutes. X started the race from pole with Rint in second, Dergatoni was third on the grid, but retired on lap 31 with a engine problem. Sifford started from 4th but retired on lap 48 with an ignition problem. Pescarolo was 5th on the grid and Eamon who started the race from 6th retired on lap 35 with an engine failure. During the 50 lap race, Rint overtook X for the lead of the race and won the German Grand Prix. X finished 2nd, just 0.7 of a second behind Rint. Holm climbed from 16th into 3rd. He was 1 minute 21.8 seconds behind. Fittipaldi moved from 13th into 4th. He was 1 minute 55.1 seconds behind. Stomalen went from 11th into 5th, he was 1 lap down, and Pescarolo dropped from 5th into 6th, he was 1 lap down as well. The fastest man of the race was X, who posted a time of 2 minutes and 0.5 seconds. Welcome to the breathtaking Hockenheim ring, where a lap starts off with a short sprint into turn 1, north curve, a median speed right hander that leads onto the longest straight on the track, which ends with a median speed right left right chicane. This leads onto another long straightaway. And this ends with a long, fast left-hander, followed by another long straight section, ending in a medium speed left-right-left left chicane. This is followed by yet another long straight section, which ends with a medium to fast right-hander, followed by a slow left-hand hairpin. This is followed by a fast left-right chicane, and next up is a medium speed right-hander. Lastly, we come through another medium speed right-hander that brings us around onto the main street, and that is a lap around the Hockenheim circuit. And here we are in qualifying for the German Grand Prix coming around to set our first and only qualifying lap, a 2.11.835, which isn't very good, but, well, I was really, really tired when I was trying to record this video, so uh, I guess that's kind of the best I could get out of myself for the time being, so, uh, hopefully the race will go a little bit better, that would be quite nice, but we will have to wait and see, and here are the previous German Grand Prix winners. Uh, Andy C Higgs Sr. even uh, won in 1965, that was a long time ago and of course he won at the Nordschleife and today we are racing at a completely different and new circuit, the Hockenheim Ring which this is the first time it's going to be used in a championship and we have Jackie example with Junti in 2nd, Jochen Rindt 3rd followed by Jean-Pierre Beltois in 4th in 5th we have Ari Pescarolo and running of the top 6 is Claire Gazzoni. Then in 7th we have Pedro Rodriguez followed by Jackie Stewart in 8th. In 9th we have Andrea Dadamich with Jackie Oliver in 10th. Then in 11th we have Jack Brabham followed by Emerson Fittipaldi in 12th. 13th is Chris Eamon. 14th is Rolf Stommelen. 15th Peter Geffen. 16th Dan Gurney. 17th George Eaton. 18th Ronnie Peterson. 19th Hubert Hanna. 20th John Love, 21st Mario Andretti, John Miles 22nd, Brian Redman 23rd, John Sertis 24th, 25th is François Sever, followed by Silvio Moser in 26th, 27th is Bruce McLaren, 28th Danny Holm, 29th Graham Hill, 30th Oliver Higgs, 31st Joe Sifford and Peter de Klerk starting from 32nd. So that is a great lineup for today's race. Once again, hopefully things will go well because, well, <laughs> the qualifying didn't go too well and that the qualifying results are, well, least desired. And we are up for the German Grand Prix and I tried to get around that McLaren as I crashed into another McLaren that was standing on the grid. I, I didn't really see him standing there on the grid, uh, unfortunately as I crashed I lost my front right uh, tire and that would have been the end of the race so I decided to restart the race because I didn't want to retire within the first few seconds of the of a race so here we are for the second start and this time things go a little bit better whoever was in the McLaren it looks like Denny Holm he didn't retire this didn't didn't get stuck on the grid this time so that's pretty nice as we come out of turn 1 now. We move up into P27 
chasing after Francois Sever. Hopefully, we'll be able to overtake him soon enough. As we take another look, at, as we take a look at a replay of the start. Uh, sorry if I stumble across my words. That's probably going to happen quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty decent start this second time around, and. We even managed to gain a couple of positions, which is obviously very good. And hopefully the rest of the race will go just as well. Anyway, we're still on lap 1 here. We've just overtaken Francois Sever, so we move up into P26 as we come through this left, right, left chicane. And there's a retirement. There's a yellow flag at least. Yes, there is a, in fact a retirement. Pedro Rodriguez, or rather Jochen Rint is out of the race. As I try to overtake Silvio Moser for 23rd. And now looking at John Miles as we take a look at a replay of Jochen Rent coming into the chicane. He crashes into one of the yard leads. Not entirely sure who was driving that yard lead but crashes into it. Uh, he ends up at the side of the circuit and that is the end of his race. Anyway coming around to start lap 2 here. And Ari Pescarolo is out of the race as we come for turn 1 here. We overtake John Surtees and Brian Redman as well. And so we move up into P18 already, which is quite nice. Let's keep on pushing. Hopefully we'll be able to move even further up the, the field. That will be very nice as we take a look at the replay of Pescarolo coming into the pistol retire. And here is a re replay of Brian Redman who has a suspension problem. He pulls to the side and he is out of the race. Next we have a replay of John Miles coming into turn 1 starting his new lap he gets hit by the stp from behind he loses control of the car try uh, tries to get back onto the circuit but for some reason keeps steering away from it uh which is kind of weird and then he just stops and gives up so that is the end of his german grand prix and we also have a replay of pedro rodriguez in the yardly coming into the pits to retire as well i think this it was Rodriguez uh, who was hit by Jochen Rint on lap 1. Anyway, we're still on lap 2 and we just overtook John Surtees for P18, which is very nice as we try to catch up to John Love. Lap 3 now and Jean-Pierre Beltois is out of the race, so we should move up into P17 soon enough as we take a look at a replay of uh, Jean-Pierre Beltois who pulls to the side of the track and apparently he has a suspension problem, so... That's going to obviously end his race. Lap 4 now. And John Love is pulling away from us as I go wide. Go off the circuit. I'm not quite sure what happened. How I ended up. Why I even pointed the car off the circuit. But as anyway I did that. And as I tried to correct the car to get it back onto the track. It kept bouncing around. And I couldn't really steer the car back onto the track. Eventually I managed to. But... The car spun and well we lost a bunch of positions now. We are down in P21 so not doing all that hot this time. At the moment as we see a replay of Silvio Moser coming into the pits to return due to a gearbox problem. We also see Jack Brabham pulling into the pits as well. So he's, his race is over too. Anyway we move on to lap 5 now trying to catch up to Joe Siffert who is in fact, pulling away from us, for some reason our car is very slow on the start. Uh, don't quite know why. But anyway, we have a replay of Bruce McLaren coming into the pits to retire due to a gearbox problem. Lap 6 now and Ronnie Peterson is out of the race. As I'm trying to keep Peter the Clerk behind me as I go wide through that final corner. Can I just about manage to stay in front of the Clerk? Which is very nice as we move up into P20 thanks to the retirement of the man who we are looking at right now. This is Ronnie Peterson pulling to the side of the track. He has a he has a broken suspension so that is the end of his German Grand Prix. Lap 8 now coming through a, a sash, sock curve as, I, as there is a blue flag behind us. I'm not quite sure who is trying to overtake us but I'm trying to keep... Peter the clerk behind me because I know he's not the one who's lapping me however I something happened I lost control of the car and that allowed not only Peter the clerk to overtake us but well we got rid of the blue flag as well anyway we have a replay of Jackie X coming into the 
stadium section, we see can, we can see smoke coming out of the rear of his Ferrari. He pulls to the side of the track, and that is the end of his race at at this point. So, one more retirement to add to the pile as we now move on to lap 10. At Peter Gustin is out of the race as I lose control of the car coming into this left right left chicane. I think I might have uh, lock, had a lock up there and that is why I lost control of the car. Anyway, we have a replay of Chris Amon coming into the pits to retire due to a gearbox problem. So that's his German Grand Prix over. And here is a replay of Peter Gustin who has a broken suspension. He pulls to the side at the end of I believe suit uh, Ost curve. And that is the end of his race. Lap 12 now coming out of Sucks as I use a little bit too much power on the exit which spins the car around and well causes me to lose even more time. Not not that I'm not not haven't been losing enough time already as we take a look at a replay of Mario Andretti who has some problems with his brakes. He's coming around the final corner there but is unable to slow the car for the final corner, so he is out of the race as well. Moving on to lap 14 now, and Andrea de Adamic is out of the race as well. And at the moment we are in P18, but that's mostly thanks to retirements. I think everyone else who is in front of us is a runner anyway. Uh, here is a replay of Andrea de Adamic, who has, a, who, who has problems with his brakes. He comes into the chicane, uh, loses control of the car, uh, it flips upside down and well that is the end of this his Grand Prix. We now move on to lap 15, we just started lap 15 and Francois Sever is out of the race as well so that's good news for Oliver Higgs obviously. Higgs and Sever don't really see eye to eye this season as we take a look at a replay of Sever coming into the pits to retire due to a gearbox problem. And now we are looking at Claire Regazzoni coming around to set the fastest lap of the race. He, interestingly enough, on the fastest lap he, he also goes wide in the final corner, but oh well, he, if he managed to, to do it, then uh, good for him. Obviously that's not a new track record since this is the first time we race at this track, but anyway, Claire Regazzoni Crosses the la on lap 16. Well, whilst I was on lap 16, Claire Gazzoni crosses the line to win the German Grand Prix. As we take a look at a replay of that, so congratulations to Claire Gazzoni for winning the German Grand Prix, the first ever Ger German Grand Prix held at Hockenheim. So that's quite nice. And as we come through the stadium section. John Surtis has retired from the race, so that should give us one more position, which means we should move up into P15 as we take a, take a look at a replay of John Surtis, who is also in the stadium section. I can see smoke coming out of the rear of his car. Yes, there is quite a bit of smoke coming out of the rear of his car. He stops right on the middle of the track, which is kind of dumb, and one of the Ferraris uh, crashes into the rear of his car. But luckily, whoever it was remembered that they had a uh, reverse gear. Anyway, here is a replay of Hubert Hanna coming into the pits at the end of the race to retire as well. As we now come ourselves around to cross the line and win and finish the German Grand Prix in P15, which is absolutely fantastic. And here are the results. Regazzoni wins with Junti in second, Oliver third, fourth, Stewart and I didn't catch the last two. Luckily we managed to finish this race ourselves as well, which is very good and here are all the retirements. Quite a lot of people retired from the race, so... Well, about half of the field retired, so... Eh, that's pretty good, I guess. In fact, I would say that it is it is very good for this time period, so... Yeah, anyway, let's move on. And here are the career statistics. This was Andy's 8th Grand Prix, his best artist from 23rd, has no pole positions, has set one fastest lap, his best finishes in first, has completed 5 races, 2 of them in the points, has won 1 Grand Prix, hasn't won in Monaco, hasn't won a championship either, has scored a total of 11 points, has retired 3 times, has experienced 138 out of 182 laps, has no bronze trophies, no silver trophies, 1 gold trophy and as an extension 1 podium. 
And here is a quick look at the championship standings. Pedro Rodriguez still leading the drivers' championship with Cubartana in second, Jackie Oliver third, Oliver Higgs fourth. Fifth is shared between Pierce Courage, Clay Regazzoni, John Miles, and Mario Andretti. The last person with points is Ronnie Peterson in 22nd, and bringing up the bottom of the driver standings is Brian Redman down in 35th. So those are the drivers, let's now move on to the constructors, where we have Yardley Team BRM extending their lead in the constructors championship with Gold Leaf Team Lotus in 2nd, Hubert Hanna Racing 3rd, 4th, our Pete Lovely Volkswagen Incorporated, sharing 5th are Scuderia Ferrari, Frank Williams Racing Cars and STP Corporation. The last team with points are Colin Crab Racing in 14th and bringing up the bottom of the constructors, our Owen Racing Organization down in 19th. So that was the German Grand Prix. Not a very good result for either Oliver Higgs or Volkswagen, but at least we managed to finish the race, so that's a little bit better than the last couple of races where we really didn't do too well. So yeah, not I really don't know what else to say about that, so let's move on. Our next race is the Austrian Grand Prix. This is going to be our second ever Austrian Grand Prix. The first one was in 1959, if I recall correctly. Or was it 1960? Ooh, I don't remember. It could have been 1960 or even 1961, for that matter. I really can't remember. Anyway, this is going to be our second Austrian Grand Prix. However, this time we are going to a different circuit than the first time. And the circuit's name is Osterreichring, so... I'm looking forward to it. Today we call it the Red Bull Ring. Is it? This circuit had so many names. I can't. I can. I can no longer keep track of which one we are using today. I think it's Red Bull. But yeah, that is it for this video. And this video was supposed to go up yesterday, as you are watching it. But I was unable to finish it. In fact, it took me the entire week to manage to finish it. I was so freaking tired every time I, uh, I got home that I started working on the video and kept falling asleep whilst trying to edit. So uh, I'm sorry, but hopefully I'll be able to render it tonight and then I'll try to upload it before going to work uh, this, uh, well, tomorrow morning and hopefully that will work out. So yeah, this video should be up Friday morning at around 4 o'clock, maybe 5 o'clock as of the time around here. So hopefully Sony Vegas won't screw me over as it sometimes does and it will render the video. And if it does, then I will be able to upload. If not, then I'll try to upload once I get back from work at some point. So yeah. Anyway, that is it for this video. Don't forget to vote for next season's team. Link, as always, is in the description. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay sharp.